Welcome back, Wayfinders. Today is not going to be an educational video. It's going to be a tour of the shop that I'll be using the rum the homestead five years from now. We have five more years left in my career. After that, I'm going to move here and operate the homestead full time. Now, this was my grandpa's shop, and through a series of lifelong events, I was able to get a hold of the entire estate, to including the shop and the house. And you'll see a lot of the things here are handmade. We got a peg system that opens the door. And a lot of the things in here are gonna be uh, not quite up to OSHA code, which is fine for a home shop. Now, right off the bat, you'll see there's a forge for family members who view this. They'll know that grandpa wasn't quite the, the metal worker. So forge work, the uh, welder, the uh, plasma cutter, that type of thing. Uh, was not really his forte. He was more of a woodworker. And this shop will be a, a woodworking shop, but for now I've been using it as kind of a, a dual purpose shop. Uh, this is a Hell's Forge just off of Amazon. They're about 300 bucks and they really do the job. I was able to take an S10 axle and forge it into a, uh, a is it Napoleon or Nepalese? Um, kukri, anyway. So kukri is a form of machete from Nepal would be the easiest way for me to say that without being wrong. Uh, this is an old little cart that we have and it works out pretty well for us with a simple anvil we've got from a place called Agri Supply. It's not the best anvil in the world, but it was available to us and it works out pretty uh, good so far. We're looking at picking up an even better one here in the future as we'll be spending the next five years uh, in Germany. All right, we'll walk all around and show the different attributes of this shop. Right off the bat, we have a clamp shelf. Uh, this is something that I built since I picked up the place because we had a giant pile of clamps and I don't like piles of things. I tend to like things uh, organized or grouped together. You'll see that we haven't fully organized the shop as we go along. This is a former, which is a uh, high powered router uh, in a sense. Uh, it is not quite secured. I have not been brave enough to play with this yet. Um, one of these days I'll pop it out. It's got a fascinating little switch system on it. Um, probably works really well. Uh, I have not confirmed uh, that, it, that it does yet. This joiner, however, we did try to use. It's got a uh, nice little platform on it. It looks to be like a four or five inch cutter. It's not plugged in because the one time we did plug it in and turn it on, it was so far out of balance that it uh, uh, took us out uh, and chased us out of the shop because it was uh, shaking so much and wobbling down, the, down the, uh, the, the main concrete area here. Now, this is a little wood corral that we have set up. Uh, Grandpa had a lot of diamond willow. Uh, I couldn't bear to throw any of it away, so we put it all in here for future projects, door handles or walking sticks, that kind of thing. I've got my DeWalt set up here. We're gonna be using 20 volt max as much as we can. Uh, we even got the weed whacker last year. Uh, my dad picked this up for the uh, cabin down the road, and I'll, I'm actually quite impressed with its quality. The controls and battery go up here for balance, but your motor's actually directly mounted onto the, uh, the weed eating head right here. So there's no main uh, supply shaft or power shaft down the center, and it really reduces the amount of dangerous items or moving parts uh, in the weed whacker, and, and it really does a great job of, of taking them down. I've been uh, overall impressed with a 20 volt uh, DeWalt Max system, and I am not affiliated, though I'd love to be if they're willing to send me stuff in the future. This guy here is an old Sears Craftsman. I doubt there'll be ever, there'll ever be any kind of affiliation with this, uh, as I don't think they make them anymore. Um, and I think Craftsman's been bought up from another company as well. Uh, this little guy here is a pretty cool little radial arm saw. Uh, comes out, works really well. You'll hear it's gonna drown me out for a second. It's catching a little bit here on the, uh, on the back edge because I've been adjusting it. I found out from my cousin here that this guy can actually come out. Not only can it swing and do 45 and, and, uh, and 22.5 and do angled cuts, but you can actually rotate the head independent of the arm, which allows you to lock this thing down and make, if I pinned it in place here, it'd stick 
exactly in, in line. It allows you to lock it down and actually run boards through uh, for uh, width, uh, similar to a table saw, but you can lock it in and do multiple boards and, and have consistent cuts that way. Uh, I am not super skilled in this uh, f uh, way of using it yet, so I have not. I'll tend to stick to the table saw for these types of cuts and use this more like a cross cut saw or radial arm or a cutoff saw. We have lots of hardware here. I have not collected this all myself. Uh, there's some interesting tools down here, handheld planers, a lot of old corded tools. Some of these work really well. Some of them need some repair. I haven't brought, I uh, haven't been able to convince myself to throw out any of the old tools yet. So uh, these uh, may just be sitting junk for a while until I, uh, until I finally uh, <laughs> get the courage to throw away some of grandpa's old tools. Here we have a bunch of hardware. If you ever need any kind of little tiny nail or screw, it's always been in here. Sometimes I call this, uh, this area uh, or, or this uh, shop the shop of requirements because whatever you need, it's here. You just have to look for it. This uh, air compressor is actually uh, fairly impressive. It's an old uh, Campbell Hossfield air compressor. Uh, it was in a shop that was damaged uh, when a tree fell and caused this thing to sit out in the open, uh, exposed to the snow and the rain uh, for several years before I came in and rescued it. Uh, the only thing that was damaged on it was a regulator. Picked up a brand new regulator, threw a new hose on there, uh, and this, this thing has been powering through just fine. Uh, we, I remember buying this thing back in 1998. It's not a very expensive one, but it's been rocking for 23 years despite being exposed to the elements. So kudos to Kamba Hossfield uh, for this guy. You know, it may explode one of these days now that I've talked it up so much, but I'll uh, replace it with a nice Cobalt or DeWalt as we go forward. I've got a couple of nice uh, compressors in my other shop that can bring down here as well. We've barricaded the stairs because Delta, our dog, tends to go up there uh, and when that trap doors open, will uh, be stuck up there because she can go up the stairs, but she can't quite come down these stairs. Uh, they're a little bit open, not very safe. I remember as a kid, we were never allowed up there. Uh, it turned out to be lumber and wood storage because it's a two-story shop and there's plenty of room up there for lumber and wood storage. All right, and over here we have the heart of any wood shop, the table saw. Now this is an old Craftsman 100. It's a cast iron topped table saw that had a three quarter horse, 120 volt uh, motor on it growing up. However, that motor eventually went out. The mechanics were still sound. So my dad upgraded it to a 240 volt, three horsepower motor. Uh, and it has a double throw, double pull, the double pull, the double throw light switch here that allows us to run uh, 240 volts uh, safely. And when you listen to this thing, you'll hear it powers up immediately. There's no spin up as there would be with a normal table saw. It's a fantastically dangerous piece of equipment. I purchased a new, uh, brand new jet uh, table saw that we'll be putting in here eventually. However, uh, for now, I, I just can't bear to, to let this thing go. Uh, it might actually be a Delta, a Delta or a Jet. Our planer is Jet. I think the, uh, the table saw is Delta. All right, I built out the little wings on that thing so that uh, you can e more easily handle large pieces of lumber. Uh, and I will retire it. I just love it so much. I'm gonna leave it for now. These Adirondack chairs are in repair. My grandpa built them as well. Uh, I didn't want to leave them out in the wilderness or out in the woods for the next five years while we shut the shop down. Uh, so they're in here to get some minor repairs and then be used in the future. All right. Here we have an old Delta Milwaukee home craft uh, lathe. Now the stand was custom built. Uh, and then we also, of course, wired it in with our light switches because that's what our family does. Uh, this is a 120 volt and I think it's a three quarter horsepower or half horsepower motor on the back. It's a pretty nifty little thing here. You make sure it's off and you can change the speeds by switching this V belt. And I've got it running at a very low speed right now because I am turning this base 
for a, a bowl sink. It's not uh, perfectly balanced because of this flat spot. So I'm running at pretty low speeds right now until I can get the thing balanced out. And you can see, still runs beautifully smooth uh, for such an old piece. I uh, will be backing this off here and reusing the guide system before working on it further. You can see my shelves are still unorganized. I've got them close to where I want them, uh, but I'm gonna be doing a uh, French cleat system here in the future. The stoves are not hooked up. This was heated by a large barrel stove in the middle of the shop. However, the insurance uh, company would not insure the place if we still use wood heat uh, in a barrel stove in the, in the shop. So we took out all the heaters. Nothing's hooked up at this point. In the future, that's something that we'll be installing. We'll do a video on it as well. This thing here, I don't ever recall it being used. Um, I'm not sure who made it. The woodworking makes me think my grandpa because he was excellent at doing some of these curves. Uh, but the, the general uh, mayhem of it, it makes me a little scared to use it. It seems to be some sort of um, metal cutoff wheel bolted to uh, old hand oiled or hand greased uh, bearing system. V-Belt 120. I went ahead and plugged this in just before the video. Uh, we've got a light switch here, which tells me it should turn the tool on. And it does. Ooh, stopped right away. That's an indicator of some friction somewhere. Belt's uh, not too tight, actually. It's probably in these bearings here. They look very old. That's a square-headed bolt holding that one down. So I uh, got some age to it. I will probably just run a, a simple Harbor Freight metal cutoff wheel <laughs> instead of using this thing. Um, yeah, that'd be my own fault if I got injured on that one. Chainsaw workbench for now. Eventually it'll be a, a tinkering workbench. We've got a metal welding bench here. Uh, I did have a uh, thermal dynamics uh, plasma cutter, which is actually still here and a MIG welder, uh, both attached to this. My MIG welder was a Chicago Electric from Harbor Freight, and it literally lit on fire on me. So we'll be upgrading to a, a Miller in the future. Probably a Millermatic 210 would be the one that I'm looking for uh, in the future. For now, I'm stuck with an arc, old arc welder and my uh, thermodynamics um, plasma cutter, which is phenomenal. I love that thing. Uh, the arc welder, though, is the welder that I grew up uh, and learned on initially. Uh, this thing is a Westinghouse arc welder. It was sold without cables uh, to my mom and dad. Um, actually, it might have had cables. I don't know about that detail. I know that I've replaced them recently because someone stole them for the copper when this was sitting uh, in a shop for a few years unattended. Um, but the Westinghouse welder was being sold at an estate auction that my uh, mom and dad went to. In fact, my dad didn't want to go to the auction. My mom said, hey, let's go for a, uh, a motorcycle ride. They hopped on the motorcycle and she gave them directions and lo and behold, they happened to end up at the auction uh, where they bought the welder for uh, an obscenely low amount. It's like five or $15 or something like that. Unfortunately, you can't carry a solid steel Westinghouse welder uh, on a motorcycle when you already have two people on it. So they had to buy the welder, drive home, grab the truck, drive back to the auction house and pick it up, uh, or the estate sale and pick it up. Uh, this thing has made it through all of my family members. It's made it through a thousand different projects, uh, probably a couple dozen different trailer builds. Uh, and it was even left out in the snow for a couple years when the shop down the road got crushed by a tree. Uh, and it was still fine. Uh, I put new cables on it and it still lays a bead like you, like you wouldn't believe. Uh, it's, I use 6011 welding rod on it and I keep it nice and dry here. And it works out pretty well for me. Now I will be upgrading to a MIG again, but it's really nice to have that little bit of nostalgia in this shop that's full of nostalgia. Yes, that's an accordion. I don't know what to do with it. I don't want to put it in the house. I don't want to throw it away. I guess my shop will always have an accordion and no, nobody in the family knows how to play it. Uh, 
bunch of tools over this side. It's important to note that my shop is protected by FLIR cameras installed by Patriot Technologies and monitored. So not only do I have video evidence of everything that's in here, but now I have a constant live feed of the shop as well for the next few years while we're heading out. Last little bit is this uh, block and tackle hooked up to a, uh, a deer station. So if we do uh, end up getting a deer, we can uh, bring it up here and process the deer in the shop and uh, lay out these tables as well uh, for the meat processing. Now, we're not done yet. This is not where I want to be. I'm pretty happy with a lot of it. However, I still need to upgrade the joiner into that table there. We're gonna put a, a nice uh, Sheely coil or Sheelix cutting. I, I forget the exact term for it. Um, it does a helix style cutting edge uh, with multiple carbide tips um, over there. It's gonna be a, a eight or a six inch uh, jet probably. I'm going to install my 16 inch jet planer there permanently, move the table saw back two feet so I have some room before and after. We'll have to find out a place here for the bandsaw. It'll be a wood bandsaw and that entire wall is going to be a French cleat system. We're gonna get rid of those two windows, half of that door, put a normal door there and do a, a French cleat um, tool organization system on that side and then finally we're gonna build the wood bench. The wood bench, you're not gonna see until the end of 2026. That's when we're finally gonna move up here uh, and work full time. But the wood bench is going to be probably a three or four part series on the channel where we build the, the ultimate uh, four by eight or eight by eight workbench uh, that we're gonna build everything else on in the future. The last thing I'll do is upgrade the lighting and I may put in a gantry style crane for moving large uh, implements up and down the shop. I've got some ideas for that as well as uh, general upgrades and, and maintenance of this place. Uh, so yes, I'm, I'm glad you stuck through the entire video. This is a lot of me rambling about what we're gonna do in the future and about where we are now, uh, but I wanted to show the shop off, show where we started. Now, when I first bought this place, it was, uh, it was much, much more cluttered. There was a lot of tools that had to be getting, gotten rid of. There's a lot of benches that we were able to get rid of as well uh, and do some general cleaning and organizing of the shop. But uh, this is where we are now. This is a few years into the property, uh, but in my perspective, I feel like this is the real beginning. So this is where we started. If you stick along with us, you like, subscribe, share, hang out with us for a couple of years and see where we get going, I think you're gonna see some pretty neat developments in this shop, which will then drive pretty neat developments all across the homestead. So thanks for stopping in. We love you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the tour and I hope you have an excellent night. Thank you and good night.